Some pairs of twins can share a unique relationship between one another, whereby they dress alike, have similar tastes and can be inseparable, whilst other twins might spend their whole lives fighting for their individuality and each striving to be their own person. The following story of the Gibbons twins seems to encapsulate both of these characteristics, as their lives together were filled with both love and hate for each other. In today's episode of Weird World, let's delve into the mysterious case of the Silent Twins. The strangest story we've ever encountered comes from 1963 and tells the story of June and Jennifer Gibbons, twins born in Barbados. The pair were known as the Silent Twins and they worked together writing fiction novels. That doesn't sound creepy, but it's about to. The twins were known to only ever talk to one another. They never talked to anyone else but each other. Their story has been highlighted by a number of people but it's never been fully explored and revealed. A story about the twins ran in the local paper, but it wasn't widely recognised. Let's delve deeper into these strange young women, who, to the general public, appeared inseparable, yet to each other were locked into a world where they desperately fought for their individuality, but at the same time appeared to possess one another. This confliction initially started creatively, when they wrote stories and plays together. But their lives slowly got darker and darker, leading to a life filled with crime and sadly, both of them ending up in mental institutions. At the end of all this tragedy, how one of them had to sacrifice themselves for the other to live. The twins established a secret language that put them apart from their friends, family, classmates and teachers. The relationship between the two left them in the depths of despair given their mutual love and hatred of one another and it's believed that one of the twins died so that her sister could go on to live a normal life. June and Jennifer Gibbons were born in 1963 and would be called the Silent Twins because of how they would only communicate with one another. The Gibbons family moved to Haverford West Wales in the UK not long after the girls were born. The town was known for being tranquil and it shared one thing in common with the twins, silence. However, the girls had the misfortune of being the only black children in their community and were bullied because of it. This would be traumatizing for June and Jennifer and would be a contributing factor to their refusal to communicate with anyone else. The Silent Twins started seeing therapists when they were 14 and they were sent to separate boarding schools in the hope that they would learn to communicate with other people. But this plan backfired and caused them to become even more withdrawn. Over the years, they were both sent to several therapists because of their refusal to talk to anyone but each other. It didn't matter how many therapists they were sent to, however, as none of them were able to get the girls to open up and communicate with other people. This was therefore the reason they were sent to separate boarding schools in the hope that living apart would break them out of their self-isolation. However, the girls didn't take well to being separated. They would become catatonic and withdraw even more from the people around them. The twins were eventually reunited and would spend several years in their room in voluntary seclusion. They would perform plays and write in diaries where they revealed the darker aspects of their bonds. June would write, Nobody suffers the way I do. Not with a sister. With a husband, yes. With a wife, yes. With a child, yes. But with this sister of mine, a dark shadow robbing me of sunlight is my only torment. During their teenage years, the sisters were inspired by their diaries and began writing stories about criminals. 
They started writing their own stories after taking a mail-order course in creative writing. June wrote two novels that were primarily set in Malibu, California. She wrote Pepsi Cola Addict, a story about a high school hero seduced by a teacher. The hero was sent to a reformatory where he was terrorised by a homosexual guard. Jennifer would write three novels, The Pugilist, Discomania and Taxi Driver's Son. Jennifer also wrote a radio play which she called Postman and Postwoman and a number of short stories. Sadly for the twins, their stories failed to take off. After failing to achieve success with their writings, the sisters turned to committing real crimes. They would choke one another, commit petty theft and even committed arson to the point that a building was burned to the ground. The arson eventually landed them in court. The judge in the case ruled that because the twins were suffering from intense social disorder, they would be confined to a high security mental facility. They were sent to Baltimore Hospital and stayed there for 14 years. The story of the twins caught the public eye when it was covered in the Sunday Times by journalist Marjorie Wallace. The way the two young women behaved in the hospital baffled the doctors working with them. For example, they would take turns eating. One of the twins would starve herself for one day as the other gorged herself and then the next day they would switch places. They had been housed at opposite ends of the hospital in their own cells, but nurses would often find the two young women in the same bizarre poses. The pair established a pact that one of them was to die while they stayed in the hospital. The doctors decided to transfer the twins to Caswell Clinic and tragically, Jennifer died during transit. The cause of her death remains an unsolved mystery. They had come to believe that if one of them was to lead a normal life, the other one would have to die. Apparently, after much discussion, it had been agreed that Jennifer would be the one who died. Doctors made the decision to transfer the twins in March 1993, and they were interviewed before the transfer by Marjorie Wallace. It was during this interview that Jennifer said, quite calmly and matter-of-factly, that she was going to have to die. When Marjorie asked her why, she simply responded, because we decided. Jennifer slept in June's lap during the trip, with her eyes open. When they reached the clinic, Jennifer was found to be unresponsive, and she was declared deceased by doctors. The cause of death was later determined to be sudden and lethal inflammation of the heart. When doctors performed an autopsy, they were unable to find any trace of drugs or poison in her body. The exact cause of her death is still a complete mystery. June was questioned about her sister's death at an inquest and she said that Jennifer had been acting strange for a few days before the transfer. She said that Jennifer had started slurring her speech and they both assumed that she was dying. Marjorie Wallace would visit June a few days after the transfer and June told her, I'm free at last, liberated, and at last Jennifer had given up her life for me. The body of Jennifer is buried under a headstone engraved with a poem written by June. It says, We once were two, we two made one, we no more two, though life be one. Rest in peace. The strange thing is that June started behaving and interacting normally with other people after Jennifer died. She didn't need psychiatric monitoring anymore and is fully integrated into her community. June now lives a quiet life in West Wales in a home near her parents. While no one fully understands the secret, not to mention bizarre world of the Gibbons twins, an excerpt taken from Jennifer's diary shows their mutual disdain the twins shared. Jennifer wrote, We have become fatal enemies in each other's eyes. We feel the irritating deadly rays come out of our bodies, stinging each other's skin. I say to myself, can I get rid of my own shadow? Impossible or not possible? Without my shadow, would I die? Without my shadow, would I gain life, be free, or left to die? 
without my shadow, which I identify with a face of misery, deception, murder.